My and folks. The subject of discussion today is Hardy's integral. That is right. This integral is due to the legendary G.H. Hardy himself. We are interested in the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of dx over a cosine square x plus b sine square x to the n. a and b are positive real numbers and n is a positive integer. Okay, cool. That is quite nice. Now, I'm going to define this as i sub n, which is going to come in handy quite a bit very soon. And I'd like to differentiate the integral with respect to its parameters. So we have partial i sub n over partial a equal to, let's see, differentiating, because of the power rule, we should have negative n over here, integral 0 to pi over 2, dx over a cosine square x plus b sine square x to the n plus 1. And of course, because of the chain rule and the fact that we are differentiating partially with respect to a, this cosine square x appears up top as a constant. Similarly, if we differentiate partially with respect to b, we have negative n integral 0 to pi over 2, terribly sorry about that, sine square x dx over a cosine square x plus b sine square x all to the n plus 1. And this is really cool because we have cosine square up top and sine square up top in another version of, in another derivative of the integral, which implies that if you add up these two derivatives, that is, we have partial i sub n over partial a plus partial i sub n over partial b equal to negative n factored out, and we're making use of the linearity of the integration operator to combine these two, we have cosine square x plus sine square x up top, which cancels out to 1, over a cosine square x plus b sine square x all to the n plus 1 dx. And that looks awfully familiar, doesn't it? Yes, indeed. That looks like i sub n, rather i sub n plus 1. And on the left-hand side, we might as well treat this as a differential operator partial over partial a plus partial over partial b acting on i sub n, because that looks extremely cool, equal to negative n times i sub n plus 1. And this gives us a partial differential equation with a recursion touch to it. And I'll write this as i sub n plus 1 equals negative 1 over n partial over partial a plus partial over partial b to times partial over, no wait, let me say this correctly. Again, English is a lot tougher than math. It's this operator acting on i sub n. Okay, that seems interesting. And the cool thing is that we can keep iterating because we know that i sub n is just going to be this operator acting on i sub n plus 1. So that means I can just repeat this n number of times until I get to i sub 1, correct? So I will have negative 1. And because with each application of the operator, I do get a negative 1. So this should be negative 1 to the n now. By the way, I'm applying this n minus 1 times indeed. And then we have n times n minus 1, dot, 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 all the way to 1. So that would be n factorial. And then we have partial over partial a plus partial over partial b, applying this n number of times to i sub 1. And that looks interesting indeed. Now wait, what on earth is i sub 1? Now this is i sub 1, and yes, I know, it's extremely cute, but how on earth are we going to evaluate this thing? Well, I have squared sines and cosines, and in such circumstances, I like to expand using secant. So we'll expand using secant square x, and terribly sorry about that, looks slightly better, but my secants never really do look all that, all that nice, do they? Way too cursive anyway. So we have the integral from 0 to pi over 2, secant square x dx. I'm kind of getting into a groove now. A times, now cosine and secant are multiplicative inverses, so you're just left with A. Then we have B times sine times secant is tangent, so we now have tangent square x. And this is great because now we can 
let tangent x equal t, which implies that secant square x dx equals dt. And as x approaches pi over 2, we have t approaching infinity. And as x approaches 0, we have t approaching 0. So all of this implies that i sub 1 is nothing but the integral from 0 to infinity dt over a plus b t squares, which does look like an arc tangent indeed. So the result should be 1 over root a times b arc tangent t times root b over a, if I'm not mistaken. I guess I'm right. 0 and infinity are the limits. So as a t approaches infinity, the arc tangent will approach pi over 2, and as it approaches 0, you get a big fat 0. So the result here is pi over 2 times a to the negative 1 half and b to the negative 1 half. So that is i sub 1. So I'd now like to take this result for i sub 1 and apply the differential operator to it n number of times, which gets me i sub n plus 1, not exactly i sub n, but it's, it's just as good because all you have to do is take the final result and shift the index back. So this is cool. So what we have is negative 1 to the n, terribly sorry about that, over n factorial. And notice that we have a pi over 2 as well. And we have partial over partial a plus partial over partial b to the n, a, a to the negative one half b to the negative one half and now i'd like to apply this operator but of course that that sounds easier than it looks but it's actually easier than it looks because all you have to do is expand this as a binomial expansion so what we have is negative one to the n terribly sorry about that that's just my ocd kicking in times pi over 2n factorial sum over k from 0 to n partial over partial a to the k which is no, 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 no. as well just the derivative with respect to a operator applied k times so that's the kth order partial then it's the n minus kth order partial with respect to b and all of this is being applied to a to the negative one-half and b to the negative one-half. Now, I can take this partial with respect to a operator and apply directly to a, and I can do the same thing to... I can, apply, I can apply the same thing for the function of b. The reason for that being, of course, that a and b are independent of each other, and more importantly, the commutator of these two derivatives is equal to zero, which is a fancy way of saying that, you know, they commute, but that's how quant... That's, that's how... That's how someone who's obsessed with quantum mechanics would always put it. Like, they're never going to say they commute. They're going to be like, no, wait, the commutator equals zero. Anyway, so what I'm trying to say is that we have negative 1 to the n times pi over 2n factorial sum over k from 0 to n. Oh, I forgot the most important thing. There's actually a, an n choose k thing over there. Uh, there's probably going to be a meme somewhere at this point of the video. So there's n choose k. And then I'm interested in the kth order partial with respect to a of a to the negative one half and the n minus kth order partial with respect to b of b to the negative one half. And that looks really cool, but now I'm interested in kth order and n minus kth order derivatives, which are not at all difficult. I mean, recall that the kth order derivative of something like x to the n is n times n minus 1 all the way down to n minus k plus 1 times x to the, what exactly? Oh yeah, it's n minus k. And this thing is equal to n factorial over n minus k factorial times x to the n minus k, which is dope because this implies that the partial derivative, the kth order partial derivative with respect to a of a to the negative one half is negative one half factorial over negative one half terribly, sorry about that, minus k factorial 
which does look interesting, but perhaps we can do better if we were to write it in the form of some kind of binomial coefficient, like if I were to expand using k factorial, then notice here that I would get negative one half, terribly sorry about that, choose k times k factorial, which is actually useful because I have a k factorial in the denominator of another term here, and that is this n choose k term, which we know is n factorial over k factorial times n minus k factorial. And the better part is that you have some cancellation taking place straight up. So you have n factorial cancelling out there. I might as well highlight this in a different color. I gotta upload this to Instagram later, so the viewers there could have a better idea of what happened exactly here. It's kind of hard to judge when it's all in the same color. So the n factorial terms go away. And as far as the k factorial term is, that goes away from here. But then, of course, you have another order derivative. You have the partial derivative, the n minus kth order partial derivative with respect to b of b to the negative half. So I can write this in exactly the same manner. This should be negative one half choose n minus k times n minus k factorial. And notice here that we have even more cancellation taking place. So we get rid of the entire n choose k term, the entire binomial coefficient. And we're left with a bunch of interesting stuff. So what we have is i sub n plus 1 equal to negative 1 to the n times pi over 2 times the sum over k from 0 to n of a bunch of terms that are, we got rid of the binomial term, we're left with the derivatives or whatever is remaining of the derivatives, and that is negative 1 half choose k negative one half choose n minus k. And I actually do feel like writing them in terms of, I, I, write, I feel like writing them in the expanded forms because that gives me an excuse to invoke the gamma function. So why not? We have negative one to the n times pi over two, sum over k from zero to n, negative one half factorial over k factorial times negative one half minus k factorial, and then we have negative one half factorial over n minus k factorial times negative one half minus n plus k factorial. Okay, this looks kind of exotic. So what on earth is negative one half factorial? One, negative one half factorial should be equal to gamma n plus 1. So that's equal to gamma 1 half. So in fact, I do have gamma 1 half squared, or in other words, I have root pi squared, which is pi. So i sub n plus 1 equals negative 1 to the n times pi squared over 2 times the sum over k from 0 to n. Okay, this is not exactly the most glamorous integration result. And I'm pretty sure there could be some simplification. At least I hope there is. Someone in the comment section help me out with this. So we have n minus k factorial times k factorial minus one half minus k factorial. And I'm going to need a little bit more writing space over here. And we have negative one half minus n plus k factorial again. Yeah, not exactly all that glamorous, but hey, at least we have the gamma function at one point and root pi is that square to pi. And there's pi over there and an alternating term. Yeah, whatever. I enjoyed the solution development. I hope you did too. Be sure to hit the subscribe button for Frodo and do drop me a follow on Instagram as well. Thank you very much. See you next time.